to thank you, the organizers, for the invitation. It's a bit unusual because uh, I'm not a machine learning uh, person by at least a deep learning person by education. So uh, you will see much less, uh, uh, actually, zero videos. So I apologize for that in advance. So um, this, is, uh, what I, uh, this is the outline of my presentation. I will talk about discrete optimization. I don't know many of you are familiar with discrete optimization. So for this reason, I will be uh, speak, give a few examples and then introdu introduce the notation. And then I will talk about the role of uh, machine learning and deep learning for discrete optimization, which is a certain uh, a new area of application in which uh, there is a lot to do. And then I will talk about a concrete example that my group is developing currently now and a few open problems. So, uh, I mean, everybody is familiar with, uh, everybody in uh, deep learning is, at least is familiar with continuous optimization because continuous optimization, so convex optimization and uh, many other things uh, are uh, a fundamental building block for um, deep learning, so for uh, optimizing over neural networks and deep neural networks in particular, so stochastic gradient descent and all the other techniques. Of course, uh, the thing is uh, uh, optimization is larger than that and uh, contains especially also discrete optimization. So uh, I start with simple with a couple of examples. So optimizing call center agent schedules, so is an example, I mean old fashioned one, is, a, is an example of uh, uh, staff scheduling. Staff scheduling is one of the, the, the largest and the widest possible applications that we have been facing over the last 50 years. And that's a lot of uh, discrete optimization going on because you have to decide the schedules of people. So essentially you are taking decisions which are inherently discrete. So you are optimizing over variables which are taking only discrete values. Uh, another example which is very famous in Montreal, creating optimal delivery and pickup for uh, routes. So this is for transportation, this is for, uh, I mean, good delivery and, uh, and pickup. This is actually something in which in Montreal uh, the people have been uh, very active for a very long time. Um, so in this sense, uh, the interesting thing that I wanted to point out at this point is that, uh, I mean, this is mathematics. So we're really going to talk about uh, uh, what, uh, what, what is uh, uh, what I will call a paradigm that is called uh, mixed integer linear uh, programming or mixed integer linear optimization. So what we, we, the game we are playing is maximizing a certain linear objective function over a set of uh, linear constraints in which some of the values variables can only take integer values, okay? So the, why, why I'm, I'm sticking with this uh, 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 type of problem, uh, and, uh, and especially why I'm caring about those problems in general and not talking to you about uh, the particular application uh, that I've shown you before. So for example, optimizing the routes for uh, transportation or optimizing uh, the staff scheduling. The reason is that uh, even if uh, this is actually a completely general problem, so in a sense it's written in a completely general form, the good news is that we can solve it by uh, general uh, methods, and I don't know how many of you heard about branch and bound, but essentially it's a divide and conquer kind of algorithm in which you are dividing your solution space into, into chunks, and then uh, at that point on it's better and it's easier to solve. So the problem that I'm, I'm, I have on the board on the slide is actually an NPR the problem. So for, com for complexity wise, this problem is actually hard to, uh, hard to uh, solve. So which means that there are no polynomial algorithms for solving this problem, which means that in large amount of data is actually hopeless to get to optimal solutions or even very decent solutions unless you do some very sophisticated kind of things. However, the good news is that uh, essentially uh, the, the MIP technology uh, the generalizes very well. So, and generalizes, I'm using it in a machine learning sense. So we learn from specific data. So we learn from uh, al developing, developing algorithms for uh, staff scheduling and algorithms for, uh, uh, let's say, uh, routing. And then these algorithms went, uh, uh, went generalized, put into software, uh, which is mixed integer linear programming solvers. And those solvers are actually solving a bunch of applications now, which are unconnected to what has been, uh, to what I was considering before. So completely other applications, still the software is actually able to solve them. And to a large extent, if you are dealing with a new completely new application, you will start in discrete optimization, you will start by try, give it a try by a, a general mixed integer linear programming solver. Okay? Of course, here we are in a situation in which, situation in which uh, 
Um, I'm talking about the fact that I'm restricting myself in a certain sense to linear constraints and uh, linear, uh, uh, linear constraints and linear jetty function, which, is, which can look like a big limitation, but in a certain sense, believe me, uh, it's, uh, it's not too much, okay? So then uh, ge generalizes means that uh, we have a bunch of uh, applications of this type that are actually uh, 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 mixed integer linear programming applications that are in different contexts on which I can use definitely the same kind of approach, even if this approach has not been developed for this kind of uh, uh, applications particularly. One uh, that is actually very important, of course, for uh, social goods is determining the most effective treatment pl plan in cancer uh, radiation therapy or another other one is definitely less, uh, let's say, uh, noble from the point of view of what we are doing, but definitely assortment optimization and uh, in uh, large data sets is very important in practice, and there are many others. So um, there, the, 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 area of the area of research that I'm, I will talk about today is the area in which uh, I'm looking at, I mean, the connection between machine learning and uh, combinatorial optimization, as discrete optimization, are very many, but uh, I will concentrate today in the next uh, few minutes to talk about what machine learning can do for uh, combinatorial, for discrete optimization, okay? And there's a lot of uh, work going on in the last 10 years, uh, starting, for example, from a, from a group of work, uh, a group of, uh, uh, let's say, uh, contributions in the last five to ten years about uh, uh, parameter tuning for uh, MIP solvers. So in a certain sense, MIP solvers, the thing that I was talking about before, so solvers, pieces of software that contain the MIP technology that are able to solve the applications I was talking about, uh, and formulating, I mean, of course, once these have been formulated, that's missing integer linear programming and models that can be solved in this way. And uh, uh, they are very complex algorithms, uh, complex algorithms which have a lot of parameters, and this is one strategy. You can learn some of the parameters by solving iteratively many instances of the same problem and finding out which is the best strategy. Of course, it's the reverse order is a hyperparameter tuning for which people are doing black box optimization in machine learning, but the things touches each other. So there are other examples, uh, some other examples of the use of machine learning in uh, mathematical optimization is in context for the more AI oriented, uh, even of machine learning oriented, which is the one of constraint programming. There is other things going on in the composition methods that will not get into, into, into the explaining. But one important thing that I will concentrate on the rest of my talk is uh, the fact that, uh, as I said, so uh, this software uh, that we are talking about, these MIP solvers, which are very powerful because they are dealing with a with applications for which they are not be developed for, but are still performing very well, they take over the entire run of the algorithm a bunch of, let's say, let's call it heuristic decisions. So decisions which are not really based on mathematical knowledge, but more on the understanding of the data, understanding of the algorithm during on, uh, on, the, on the run. So for this reason, uh, I believe that there is the space for a lot of nice applications uh, in machine learning. So the use of the, uh, developing a nice algorithm for dealing with the situations, and some of them are easy, and uh, in a certain sense, some of them are clear-cut uh, applications, and some of them, uh, at the end of my talk, will be much more complicated one. So I start from a, an easy one, in a certain sense, and uh, I do a, a slight dig digression because mixed integer linear programming solvers now can solve, uh, I mean, evolve uh, to solve uh, something which is a little bit more complex than what I, I shown before. So what I shown before is that I had a linear objective function. Instead, uh, in this case, I'm considering a mixed integer quadratic optimization problem. So uh, same thing as before, linear constraints, uh, uh, variables, which are actually, uh, some of them uh, are uh, uh, integer, but the, uh, in particular in this case, binary, but the objective function is not linear anymore, it's actually quadratic objective function. So the question that uh, I don't want to go into the details, and I think it's, it's completely useless in, in, this, uh, in this sense here, uh, to tell you how to solve this kind of problem, but I can tell you that there are two uh, specific strategies that you can apply. So the first specific, stra specific strategy is to linearize the objective function, so essentially uh, coming up with some linear representation of this objective function and then using the mixed integer linear optimization per se, or you can keep going and try to keep the objective function as it is, so quadratic and going in this direction. Okay, these are two families of algorithms that are, and this is the first important decision that a MIP solver has to take one, once dealing with a problem like this. Okay, and so uh, at the moment, this is taken in, uh, by 
uh, in a very heuristic way. So in a sense, uh, these are, uh, you analyze some parameters, you make some runs, usual way, but essentially at the end of the day, there is no mathematics behind the scene. So what we try to do is, uh, uh, together with uh, one of my students, one colleague in uh, IBM uh, uh, Cplex, which is one of the best solvers for solving this kind of application, is indeed try to be more, more formal. So uh, try to use machine learning for learning directly from data how to take a decision like this. And the decision is, uh, uh, as I said, it's not a clear cut, but the decision is uh, precisely what is on the board. So saying uh, exploit machine learning predicting machinery to understand if it's actually a good idea or not linearizing the problem and solving it that, in that form. Uh, just to be uh, clear, so this is an NPR problem. So I can linearize and solving it in 10 seconds uh, or I, can, may, I may not linearize it and not solving it in a few hours. Okay, that's the difference between the things. And of course, the vice, I'm interested in the problem because vice versa is also true. So I can linearize the problem and not solving it in a few hours, or I can not linearizing it and solving it in a few seconds. So that's the kind of difference we're talking about. And of course, this is actually applications in which I need to solve these problems on a routinely based. And some of them, some of these ideas may depend on the data. Some of this, I mean, decisions may depend on the data. Some of this may depend on actually the structure of the problem. And so we don't know how to do it technically, or at least we didn't know how to do it before doing this job. So uh, the rest of uh, the presentation, I will, I will skip a lot of slides. So there's a couple of slide, uh, important slides in order to tell you which is the methodology that is behind the scene for doing this kind of thing. So and actually to point out, oh, that's the name of the people that I'm talking about here. So Pierre Bonami is from IBM Cplex. IBM Cplex is uh, one of the largest uh, the biggest, uh, let's say, no, the most powerful solvers, uh, MIP, MIP solvers that is actually uh, worldwide recognized as a commercial solver. And Julia Tarpelon is one of my students. So PhD students. So the idea is uh, one big, uh, since I'm, I'm uh, selling you an area of research, so what is actually the difficulty of this area of research? One of the biggest difficulty of this area of research is that uh, uh, in general for combinatorial optimization, uh, we don't have uh, enough data. Okay, so in principle, uh, the thing is that uh, we, of course, we can produce as much data as we want, but this is actually taking a lot of time because uh, the decision that we are talking about here is linearizing, non-linearizing. As, as you can see, you can represent it immediately as a super, uh, supervised learning kind of problem, but in order to get to the labels, you still have to solve two NPR problems until the end and then finding out which is the best strategy. So we don't have too many of these uh, uh, problems, so instances of the problem in our data set. So one big thing for this area of research is also finding good methodology for defining the data set. Okay, and this is important. This is one big part of what we did in our uh, in our framework. And essentially, we, we found a generator of mi uh, mixed integer quadratic instances, which is actually makes sense uh, for a lot of uh, different reasons. And this is actually one part of the game that uh, that we have seen, that we have played a lot. So other than that, of course, uh, um, uh, I will skip most of the methodology here because for the people that are expert in machine learning, this is not really big rocket science in, its, in a certain sense. So what we are doing is really like a supervised learning. We define the features which are static and dynamic. Uh, at the end of the day, we don't want only to, under, to predict, but we want also from the mathematical standpoint to try to understand what's going on, right? I mean, we want to find out which are the characteristics of a certain instance or a certain class of problems that are actually dealing with this thing. So we are experiencing a lot with both ensemble methods, so things that we can interpret a little bit more, so random forest and stuff like this. And we have done a lot of things with, and we are doing currently developing new things with deep learning. So the good news is that at the moment with, with ensemble methods, which is the thing that we are doing a lot better at this point, we have a nice, a nice results. So the accuracy of these models are very high. And at the same time, and I'm skipping until the end, and essentially, we are able to save a lot of time. This is the, the picture here, uh, saving a lot of time in solving these problems. So the generalization over a large uh, group of instances which are in the data sets of the companies, for example, IBM, it's still an issue. So we are still working on the generalization. But I mean, we have the nice intuition that these things are running. So let me finish with uh, uh, two simple, actually, 
one slide, I'll take 15 seconds more, sorry. So this slide is about uh, one important thing that we would like to do, and I'm sorry. I, I was able to not doing this until the end, but uh, this is one uh, open problem, so learning to search. So we would like to use uh, machine learning to actually construct the feasible solutions, not only taking decisions within the algorithms, but actually taking good decisions to build the solutions, which is actually uh, uh, quite difficult. And uh, let me finish with one single slide about uh, the most important uh, uh, problem in, the, in this particular area of research, and the most important one is actually branching. So branching is uh, how to split the problem into groups, uh, and so how to decide the single variables. So if I decide how to branch uh, in, uh, in the branch and bound method, I'm able essentially uh, to uh, solve, that is the technology that is behind the scene, and in order to do this, I need to, uh, I mean, clev apply clever mathematics. Unfortunately, the mathematics is not clever enough for doing a branching, so splitting the problem into divide and conquer algorithm in the best possible way, and there is a lot of activity going on in understanding how to do this, which is actually the most important uh, problem in, uh, in the literature so far. So, uh, currently, so, and then, of course, there's a lot of activity in Montreal, so just uh, try to join us as much as you can. Thank you very much. Mm.